Hey guys, I thought we would totally be architects today and design our own business storefront, right? Um, so if I give you some simple lines and some guidelines to follow, then you will be able to turn it into whatever you want. So you can totally use your imagination. This would be a great um, opportunity to talk to your kids about entrepreneurship. And maybe if they could own a business, what would it be? What would it look like? What would they sell or do? So um, all I'm going to be using is copy paper. And then of course you'll need a pencil, something to e or an eraser, um, and then marker to trace with, and then um, crayons, markers, color pencils, or all of the above if you want. And we are going to get started. I have a good old Sharpie to draw with because that way you can see what I'm doing. I cannot draw with pencil because you cannot see. We are going to draw a very tall vertical line, but make sure that you draw it very softly because there are parts of it that we will need to go back and erase. Like I said, I won't be able to, but that's okay. Um, so I actually, yeah, I am going to draw a vertical line almost to the bottom, but not quite almost to the top, but not quite. Then I will go across the top. If you would feel better, you could always grab a straight edge or a ruler. Um, or you know what, just kind of sketch like this and just go with it. Definitely doesn't have to be perfect. I never aim for perfection. I just aim for trying my best, right? Okay, and then we need connecting line across the bottom, just like that. So essentially we just have a really big rectangle, okay? Across the top, I'm gonna extend this line a little longer and a little longer. Try to make it the same on both sides. Vertical, vertical, horizontal to connect, okay? Then I'll add, I could add like a little chimney looking thing up there if I wanted to. Okay, now this is actually gonna be a two story, so I need to divide it. So I'm gonna draw another horizontal line, just like that. But this time we're gonna make like the canopy, like the little overhang, so I know my canopy is a little wider than my finger. Okay. There we go. And then I will connect all the way across, just like that. Now, I think I knew I had some white out. It must have just taken a fall. There we go. Now you guys can actually erase because you're using pencil. But since I was using Sharpie, I'll just use some magic white out and get rid of it. Ta da. Right? Right. Okay. Now, right here, I'm gonna do a vertical line and a vertical line, and then I'm gonna make a bunch of smile curves that go all the way across to the other side, and then draw vertical lines connecting, just like that. And of course, this little canopy is not see-through, so I would need to erase that side of that building line right there, that building line right there. There we go. And now you got a, a lot of decisions to make. Are you going to have a rectangle door? Are you going to have a big double door? Is it going to be right in the middle? Is it to the side? Is it a, a door that has like a, a curved line at the top so it's kind of fancy and maybe there's a window right there and 
we could make it look sort of fancy window. And then of course we need a handle or you could make it a knob either way. Then maybe just like my studio, we might have a really big window across the front. Um, yeah, I might just leave it like that. Maybe put a little window frame around it. Or you could divide it like I could have done vertical lines and one across so it looks like window panes that are in there. Again, you're your own architect, so you can do you, okay? Um, and then we have to have a ground, right? Can't just be floating in the air, so we gotta ground it. We might even have like a cute little bush. for decoration, maybe have one on both sides, or I guess I could have put a mailbox on the other side. There we go. Cute. Maybe add some texture lines in our, our little bushes there, okay? And then we need some windows at the top. Maybe I want to make my windows match the shape of the door. Um, about two fingers wide. Sometimes if you're trying to make things the same, you can use things to measure them with, and that will help. And then I can stick one right there in the middle. There we go. Maybe make them kind of those fun designs like we did on the door. Okay, and then across the middle could be the name of their business, like whatever they're gonna name it. Here we go. Ta-da! Remember, you can pause me at any time to get all caught up. Um, I totally feel like it needs something right there, but I don't know what. Hmm, I'll think about it for a minute. Okay, and then you get to do all the awesome coloring. So you could trace with marker like I do in a lot of my projects and then go back and color with crayon. So like trace with color marker and then go back and color with the same color crayon. That's kind of a fun technique. You could use colored pencil. You can use a little bit of everything and that would be a multimedia piece. Um, but because you are the architect, you got to build your building how you want to. Now you can become the designer. So now you have to design the colors that are going to go in there. Okay. Um, so you guys can have as much fun with that as you want. Orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Start my pattern over again. You could do an AB pattern. So like pink, blue, pink, blue, pink, blue, or you could make a um, ABC pattern. So like do three colors. Man, marker doesn't work on top of, on top of white out very well. That's okay though. Yellow. So I use the whole side of the marker tip to get it colored in. That way it looks nice and smooth, kind of outline. And then go back, up and down, up and down, up and down to get it filled in. Green, blue. Up and down, up and down. There we go. And purple. Nice. Oh, I love that. Okay. 
Those could even be like stained glass windows. How fun would that be? So like different color window panels, that would be really fun. Green, blue, purple, red. And so see, I skip and just color all the same colors at once. That way I don't have to keep open, close, open, close, open, close my markers. I mean, I kind of know I already am, but even more than I already am. Yellow. Green. And again, I try to make my color lines go the same direction. I definitely do not try to like shh, hurry my coloring. So if your kiddos get their drawing done first and then they're kind of like, oh my gosh, I spent so much time drawing it, I want a break, definitely give them a break because if you just make them finish it, they're gonna try to rush and be done with it and they're not gonna do their very best. Believe me, I know. Been there, done that a lot of times over the past 14 years. I have been teaching art for 14 years. I've finished up my 14th year and um, feel like I kind of have a lot of experience. And Artsy Rose has been open five and a half years. So it's like double duty art. <laughs> okay, maybe put gray here. Sometimes it's nice if you put one color in one spot to go ahead and put that color somewhere else um, to kind of balance things out a little bit. Up and down, up and down, up and down, just like that. There we go. And maybe, oh, should continue my pattern down here too, shouldn't I? Oh, but I didn't use red, I used pink. I switched up my rainbow a little. Red, orange, yellow, green, Maybe do a black candle just to keep it easy. Okay, and then maybe the lights are on, so my window is maybe all yellow, so it's lit up. Now my windows at my studio are painted. So they have design, I mean, you can totally see them, but they have designs on them, which is fun. Brown. Green, green, and keep it going. There we go. And same thing over here. I gotta think about what color I'm gonna do at the top up there. I don't wanna get too crazy with it because then we'll totally lose all of our letter design there, right? We don't wanna take away from the business name. So you don't want it to be too uh, colorful or crazy up there. Um, hmm. Maybe I'll do pink. I have a lot of pink up at Artsy Rose. Go figure, right? Now, since you guys use pencil, you will totally not have the problem that I'm having right now where the marker doesn't cover up the white out, but that's okay. All the way across. There we go. And Maybe brown up here and 
times. There we go. Down here, I might have um, like a little pebble path. That could be fun. So like a little stone design going on in our path going on here. There we go. Boop, 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 ba doop, boop. Okay, and then use some gray. Whoop. So I'm using gray crayon on top of gray marker so I can still see the gray marker. Kind of gives it a fun texture. And anytime I'm coloring in big chunks of area, sometimes I'll use a crayon instead of marker anyway so I don't get as discouraged, right? Man, what color is this building going to be? I guess I could like really go all out. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Go really all out and make it a pink building. Because my building is tall, I'm making my lines go up and down, up and down, up and down. But you could totally go left and right if you wanted to. There we go. But, of course, if you're squeezing in small areas, it's hard to go a certain direction. So you might have to go left and right, or if you're trying to squeeze in a small space. Okay, that's cute. And then my last thing would be to color the sky. Now, of course, I could do sunset, I could do daytime, I could do nighttime. Um, you, I mean, really, you can do whatever you want because it's your art. Now, I will tell you, um, Sometimes with the sky, what I'll do is I'll take a peeled crayon, a little bit of a peeled crayon, and um, pinch it, just like that, okay? And then I will use the side where I peeled to color. Now, if you have something cool at home that's kind of rough or has some cool texture, uh, it's awesome to put that up underneath your paper and then put your paper down and then use the side of your crayon like this and rub, 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 and you can get that texture from whatever it is you put underneath it, like say sandpaper or something like that. Then you rub your crayon on top like this and the texture will come through. It's really neat. So the paper that's underneath my board um, is watercolor paper, so it has a natural texture to it. So you can see that a little bit, but you could have an even more bold, awesome texture if you put something a little bit more rough underneath there. So that, my friends, is my shop, my studio, in my head, my imagination, right? And you could totally turn this into whatever you wanted to, right? Um, I am a little sad that I had that white out on there, but that's okay, it still looks nice. And you guys, this is gonna look even more incredible because you did not have to use white out. So it's gonna look even better. If I go on top of it with crayon, it kinda hides it a little bit. It will cover up crayon, or crayon will cover up uh, white out. There we go. Awesome. Okay. So that, my friends, is our very fun architecture project. Do all that awesome social media stuff. Share this. Please, please, please spread the word about Artsy Rose. Um, like, subscribe, and I cannot wait to do some more art with you.